everybody. Uh, welcome to our brand new show, The Executives. Today we have with us Mr. Suman Lahri, COO of Lido Malls Management Private Limited. Uh, he's here for a chat with us. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, sir. Welcome Hi, yeah, to our good show. Evening. Good to have you. Thank you. Sir, um, a little heads up about your background, please. Sure. Uh, it's been almost 22 years that I'm working. Uh, I started off with the hotels and then, of course, operations and then into multiplexes. Then got into the management career and slowly from the operations moved into strategy and uh, then pulling the entire business forward. So it's been a journey of mine. And uh, Bangalore, I just moved in recently, say around two, two years back. And uh, fun city, nice city, great <laughs> weather, good place. <laughs> Enjoying it. <laughs> okay. So, sir, um, when, within a very short span of time, uh, Lido Mall, 1MG Mall have managed to be, you know, a very successful destination Thank for you. shoppers. Uh, how did you manage to do this? What's the success mantra behind okay. it? See, uh, mall, uh, for how it all begins with when the mall is on a drawing board. While somebody, some developer or somebody who wants to build a mall starts planning about a mall, they first have to look at a location. Once the location is finalized, then it is determined what is the catchment, what the kind of people who are going to visit right. the mall. Once the catchment is determined, that in fact populates down to what kind of retailer you should have in the mall. Which is our research which we had done extensively before the mall was, uh, while the mall was being conceived. While we filling of uh, shops in a mall is called a leasing activity. So while this leasing activity was done, the catchment, the kind of retailers that are necessary to fill in this mall were consciously kept in mind and the correct brands were approached to come into the mall. And uh, if you look at 1MG uh, and Lido being at MG Road, heart of Bangalore, the traditional shopping entertainment district of Bangalore, uh, has also helped us after we have conceived and after we have got the mall in the right place, being in the right location has also helped us in putting the mall together. It's been around a journey of uh, four years for this mall. Uh, and yes, I can. I think I can, with all honesty, I can say that this is one of the most successful malls currently in Bangalore. Right. So there was a conscious decision uh, yes. about the location and also yes. the brands that you uh, uh, wanted to have in the Absolutely. mall. A very conscious and Absolutely. studied, uh, studied yes. decision. Yes. All right. Yes. So, um, so what are your thoughts on uh, retail revolution? See, uh, it's been almost now 10 years that retail has been going on this cycle. So initially it was the high street and then uh, more of the un unorganized retail, then bigger players coming into it. Then from the high street it moved into shopping arcades and shopping centers, which actually kind of phased out with the advent of malls. Uh, I remember when I st first started off, uh, when, I, when I joined Future Group, that was in 2006 and we were, I joined the mall management team. Uh, it was entirely a new animal. Everybody was thinking as in what is to be done, what, what is to be done. Okay. And a uh, lot of inputs honestly came in. We replicated a lot of stuff which were from abroad, from the foreign companies, from the foreign malls. Then of course India being the country it is with so much of diversity everywhere we started adapting to the culture here okay. and things started moving on. If I have to go back and just look say around three years or four years back, mm -hmm. I think malls have frog lift decades every year. Mm -hmm. Currently, uh, the shoppers are extremely conscious of what deal they are getting into a mall, what is the kind of uh, retail outlets that they want in the mall. And also the retailers, while at a point in time, and every developer was jumping on the mall, brand Morgan trying to build a mall and retailers trying to get into a mall. It's very focused and kind of very steam, steam, streamlined today, wherein a developer exactly knows what is the kind of mall that he wants to build and a retailer knows which is the best mall for him to get into. So by far, by these two conjunctions, the shopper is being benefited as in he has choice of multiple malls, but they are more becoming specialized as in people know which are the places they want to visit in mm -hmm. and to fulfill their needs. So I think all three parties, it's a win-win for them. So that's how the retail revolution, I think, is moving forward. And with the advent of so many foreign brands now coming into India, I think we have a lot of things, a lot of excitement in this sector. Okay, okay. So um, how do you distinguish 1MG Mall from other malls, sir? 
See, one MG is a. If you look at retail development today, we have malls which are almost a million square feet, so 10 lakh square feet. Whereas one MG is a 2.25, 2 lakh 25 thousand square feet development, and our adjoining mall, which is also our property, is another 1 lakh 25 thousand square feet of development. So while these two malls put together does not have the might of size. It is in the customer experience, in the way we uh, operate or in the marketing initiatives that are done or in the retail outlets that are here in the mall, I would say we are different. I, If I have to put it, there were some discussions which we have had earlier, if I have to just quote from there, I would say we are not lifestyle, we are not mass, we are in between, somewhere in between. That's, that's how it's been distinguished. Okay, okay. So, um, I, uh, we do note that the mall encourages events, you, focus, you do focus on events as well, uh, you want to say something on that? See, events are extremely important for a mall. Let's, let's go back at history and understand what is a mall. If you, if you look at those old uh, villages and they, would, they used to have those weekly heart or whatever we right, used to call right. them. There were a lot of activities, a lot of fun fairs. So there was a lot of things which was associated with while the parents are probably coming in to buy the groceries or the vegetables or whatever. There was a lot of fun fair associated with it. So we try to get that. So what is a mall? A mall is again a place wherein it's for anybody, for whether it's a family or whether it's a single person, he should be able to come and enjoy himself or herself or as a family here. Okay. So while the main target, the main focus is on shopping, events and promotions help us draw a lot of people also and entertain people around here. Plus, while one part of the event is concentrated in terms of entertaining people, the other part of the event is very retail centric. So while you have discounts, promotions and everything happening, which is actually wherein, say, I will just elaborate just for yeah. understanding sake. If we are looking at this Dashera Diwali, which is just coming, retailers come up with their plethora of discount. We are taking the ante a level up by saying whoever is shopping X amount of money in this mall gets to participate in a lucky draw wherein he can uh, win a Bolero car from right. Nexus or he can uh, win a Aprilia or, or there are Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia such holiday packages being given for a couple and a family. Right. So while people are coming, these events and promotions are further helping them to actually enjoy the shopping experience and also helping the retailer in terms of increasing their sales. Right. This actually comes from that age-old concept of uh, that from, it uh, years ago. actually evolved from there. But if we look in here, it's an intrinsic concept of mall operations. So basically, it's a win-win for you and the public. Uh, and the retailer uh, and as well. Yes, so it's a win-win for everybody. You okay. shop, you if you are lucky one, you shop for 5,000 rupees. And if you are the lucky one to win a Bolero, I think life cannot get any better. <laughs> Can't get any better, right? <laughs> right, sir. So, uh, do you think uh, the onslaught of online shopping has actually affected the offline uh, shopping? Uh, uh, and has a former uh, been you know successful at all initially when all the big names started giving huge discounts we had honestly seen a dip in the footfall mm -hmm. a lot of people might agree with me a lot of people might disagree with me uh, there might be a lot of statistics which might be put on and every party tries to pr prove himself right by saying yeah it has been extremely well online or uh, the brick and mortar retailers as we are today, we would say no, it has not been that, no, it had, hadn't had a dent really. I, it's my personal opinion, looking at the operations and being with this industry for quite some time now, I feel yes, initially we had had an effect, uh, but then, you know, somehow that effect, I think the retailers also kind of reinvented themselves with the products, with the discounts, with the formats, with the offerings that they had been doing and uh, currently it's a win-win for both i see online is here to stay i do not see online just phasing out it's not a fad like a lot of startups uh, at the same point of time i think uh, brick and mortar retail cannot be replaced completely 
It yeah, personally, even me, I would not go to an online shop, uh, shopping, you know, outlet, uh, and actually shop because I need to feel my product. I need to see whether it suits me mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So I really feel that mm -hmm. what you're saying is right. Brick and mortar is here to stay. Correct. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, so, um, you know, you've been in this business for so long. I'm sure you have some very important thought on this. Uh, how important is customer experience? You, me are all customers. Today, when we go to a place, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a retail outlet or it's a hypermarket, you would like to be treated well. Right. You would like to, if not pampered, at least given the due respect that you demand as the person who's taking your wallet out, taking that car out, taking that money out and spending in there. Age old thing which has always been said and more so because of my background being in hotels, customer is king boss. We do not defy, we do not deny that it is because of them, even my MD of the company probably exists, I am smaller compared to him. <laughs> so I think it's, it's extremely important to treat a customer well, treat him with respect, uh, be honest with him. I, I have in all of, throughout my life and my working life experience, I have seen if honesty does not get beaten by anything else and uh, it is extremely important to have them coming back to you. Yeah, uh, have, have there been instances where a customer has actually given you valuable feedback? Have you had to de deal with it? Any examples of that? A lot of times. See, we have a customer service desk which is there in the mall which can be a replica of a concierge or probably a front office kind of in a hotel. We always collect feedback from our customers. There are dedicated people in the mall to assist customers in case if they are uh, they need something. And forget this team of dedicated people is the customer or the customer service desk. All of us, whenever we are there in the front of the house on the floor, we try and see what is good, what is bad, who needs help, how do we want to take things forward, how do can we reach reach out to them. These are the things that we do. We have received uh, a big example. The mall was built in a way wherein uh, the design was that there were two levels of high street. So mm -hmm. if you look at the from the main, uh, if you stand in front of the mall, and you'd see there is a line of shops there and there are other levels which are coming yeah. up. Somehow uh, the connectivity to the first floor was through staircase and elevators mm -hmm. and people have to come into the mall and then uh, access the first floor. It was the biggest thing. It was the, uh, there were a lot of n number of suggestions that we received from our customers saying that the connectivity to the first floor can be improved okay. and today you see there is an escalator sitting yes, there. Yes. So these are the kind of feedbacks we take. There are certain things unfortunately which we cannot address because of physical uh, limitations wherever we can we would satisfy the needs. Right, it's one thing to get feedback but another thing to actually apply sure. and make it practical. As right. I'm saying, yeah. whenever yeah. it is possible for us, we will 100% uh, go ahead and achieve that. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, the festival season is up. Yep. Uh, what are your expectations from the season now? We should be seeing a good festive, festive season this year as far as the retail goes. Uh, what we had been talking to our retail partners in the mall, all of them have very good expectations. I know again, uh, taking that cue of that online retail which you are saying, there are a lot of discounts, a lot of stuff which are right, also been right. offered there. But honestly, I see the mood extremely upbeat, extremely confident among the my fellow mall developers as well and uh, also in the retail circuit because as we are saying, we don't, we don't immediately see there is any replacement for brick and mortar retail. And I think India is in a position wherein we do expect a healthy, okay. healthy sales season to be in front of Fantastic. us. Fantastic! I wish uh, you the same. Thank you. So, um, so now you are entering into property management. Uh, how is the vertical performing? See, as a developer, other than the retail assets, we always uh, we also had commercial as well as residential assets. Uh, as a developer, what we have realized is, if you build a property and uh, while you are handing it over to the customers who have bought properties or have rented it out it looks swanky beautiful neat and clean but over the years if it is not maintained well there are issues which prop up in these properties mm -hmm. which is not a very good scenario because at the end of the day the developer the building is always associated to that particular developer or the promoter who has done the building so it is much more prudent 
to maintain these buildings for years to come so that the people who are buying these assets or leasing these assets have a good uh, 10, 15, 20 years into, into these places. And also as developers, we have a good name in the market. So people look at a building, they say, oh, wow, this is a nice building that has been maintained and it's already been eight or 10 years, mm -hmm. but this is still looking very nice. That is why we planned to get into this property management. Uh, honestly, it's still in its, uh, you know, it's just in, in the, na I would say it has crossed the nascent stage, but uh, would take around two to three years to be uh, solidly grouted as a good vertical. So okay. we are working on it. So uh, there is scope for it? Very much, huge. Okay. Because see, as many buildings that come up, they need maintenance. Whether it's commercial properties or residential properties, retail needs the maximum handholding and attention. There is huge scope of property management in any city in India currently. All right, okay, okay. So um, does uh, Lido Malls Management Private Limited aim at acquiring more malls? Yes, of course, we are always in the lookout for good properties. But as I said uh, in the in the first question that you had asked me, how has this mall performed well? Location is of primary importance to us. And uh, since it's already, uh, if you're talking of acquiring an asset, an asset which is already built, it is extremely important for us what is the quality of the asset. So two factors we are always, uh, would take primary importance is of course the location, the quality of the asset, and uh, we are look out for new properties, that's for sure. Okay, so um, what is the vision, sir, of uh, Lido Mall Management Private Limited? I'm sure you have one vision uh, for an immediate future plan and uh, the long-term plan. What do you have to say on that? If you are looking at uh, the mall management vertical of the company, we are looking at growing the company slow and steady. We are right. not in a rush to do things. We would uh, take informed decisions, acquire good properties, and take this asset, take this company into a bigger vertical. For the property management uh, scenario, there are already captive in-house assets which the company has, which the company, the property management vertical is uh, moving forward, managing them. And then in the future, we can move out and manage other assets okay. as well. Are there any challenges as well to uh, take this forward uh, See, towards the vision? Every business has its challenge. I think the first and the foremost, I would say, is a breadth of quality manpower. Uh, quality trained skilled manpower uh, other than that I business is plenty uh, to be honest that's a very it's a new utopian kind of a scenario for a business manager to say but I would say business is plenty yes we just need to look at the opportunities hold them and move forward right so do you have anything for the viewers about uh, Lido mall and 1MG mall uh, you have planned a lot of things this October November do visit us and uh, I'm sure you'll have an excellent, good time. Thank we're you. sure we will have. Thank you very much. You were on our show, Thank you sir. So much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Same here. You have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you.